Good morning, class. Before we start our discussion for this week, I just want to introduce again myself. I am Miss Rosalie F. Yulan, your teacher in mathematics. Our topic for this week is just a continuation of our discussion in the first week, which is the factoring. Here is our objectives. We have three. Relate special products with factoring, factor polynomials, and use factoring to model and solve geometric problems. Uh, this uh, diagram has been already shown to you in our class during the first week. So let's proceed to our discussion. Factoring. It is the process of finding factors. It is like splitting an expression into a multiplication of a simpler expression. So we have here our example for more clarification. A factor 2y plus 6. How to factor numbers with variables. So since both 2 and 2y and 6 have a common factor of 2 or can be multiplied by 2, so 2y is 2 times y and then 6 is 2 times 3. So we can factor the whole expression into 2y plus 6 is equal to 2 times the quantity y plus 3. So 2y plus 6 had been or has been factored into 2 and y plus 3. Numbers have factors. So here, 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So number 6 has 2 factors, which is 2 and 3. And expression like x squared plus 4x plus 3 also have factors. So the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 1 is the factors of x squared plus 4x plus 3. Common factor. So this time, let's define what is common factor. In the previous example, we saw that 2y and 6 had a common factor of 2. But to do the job properly, we need the highest common factor, including any variables. Example number 1. Factor 3y squared plus 12y. First, 3 and 12 have a common factor of 3. So, we could have 3y squared plus 12y is equal to 3 times the quantity y squared plus 4y. But, we can do better. 3y squared and 12y also share the variable y. Together, that makes 3y. So, 3y squared is... 3y times y and then 12y is 3y times 4. So we can factor the whole expression into 3y squared plus 12y is equal to 3y squared multiplied by the quantity y plus 4. So let's check if our uh, answer is correct. 3y times the quantity y plus 4 is equal to how we're going to check it? Let's use the distributive property. So multiply 3y times y that makes a result of 3y squared. And then copy the addition sign. Plus 3y multiplied by 4 is equal to 12y. So our checking result is correct. So therefore, our factor for 
3y squared plus 12y is 3y and y plus 4. Example number 2. Factor 4x squared minus 9. There don't seem to be any common factor since 4 and 9 doesn't have any common factors. But knowing the special binomial products gives us a due code the difference of squares in which 4x squared can be factored into 2x raised to 2 and then copy the subtraction sign and 9 can be factored into 3 raised to 2 because 4x squared is 2x raised to 2 and 9 is 3x raised to 2. So we have here 4x squared minus 9 is equal to 2x raised to 2 minus 3 raised to 2. And that can be produced by the difference of squares formula. So the formula for the difference of a square has been already discussed in our first week topic. The formula is a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared, where our a is 2x and our b is 3. So let's try doing that. a, 2x plus b, which is 3, multiplied by 2x minus b. So equals 2x squared minus 3 raised to 2, or 3 squared, with a result of 4x squared minus 9. So the factor of this number are 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. Remember these identities. Here is the list of co common identities including the difference of a square. It is worth remembering this as they can make factoring easier. So take note with this formula since it can help you in solving our problem or solving our um, problems given easily. So just read these uh, formulas. Reminder that the factored form is usually best when trying to factor, follow these steps. First, factor out any common terms. Common, common terms. Let's uh, take this as our first step. And then second, see if it fits any of the identities plus any more you may know. And then last is keep going until... You can't factor anymore. So if you cannot factor it anymore, uh, maybe it, it is the final answer. Example number three. Factor W raised to 4 minus 16. An exponent of 4, may, maybe we could try an exponent of 2. 4 raised to 4, uh, W raised to 4 minus 16 is equal to W squared multiplied by or raised to 2 minus 4 raised to 2. Yes, it is the difference of a square. W4 or W raised to 4 is minus 16 is equal to the quantity of W raised to 2 plus 4 times the quantity of w raised to 2 minus 4. And w raised to 2 minus 4 is another difference of squares that can be still factored out. So w2 or w raised to 2 plus 4 times the quantity of w plus 2 times the quantity of w minus 2. That would be the final answer. Example number 4. Factor z cubed minus z squared minus 9z plus 9. Try factoring the first two 
add second to separately. So the answer is, or the factored form is z minus 3 times the quantity z plus 3 times z minus 1. For the example number 5, observe the problem and also the steps or the process of solving the problem. How to factor a polynomial expression? In mathematics, factorization or factoring is the breaking apart of a polynomial into a product of another or other smaller polynomials. If you choose, you could then multiply these factors together and you should get the original polynomial. This is a great way to check yourself and your factoring skills. One set of factors, for example, of 24 is 6 and 4 because 6 times 4 is equal to 24. When you have a polynomial, one way of solving it is to factor it into the product of two binomials. You have multiple factoring options to choose from when solving polynomial equation. For a polynomial, no matter how many terms it has, always check for a greatest common factor or the GCF first. Literally, the greatest common factor is the biggest expression that will go into all of terms. Using the GCF is like doing the distributive property backward. If the equation is a trinomial, it has three terms, of course. You can use the FOIL method for multiplying binomials backward. So FOIL method has been discussed in our first week. Just review. If it's binomial, look for the difference of squares, difference of cubes, or sum of cubes. The formula was also given in our first week. And finally, after the polynomial is fully factored, you can use the zero product property to solve the equation. If a polynomial doesn't factor, it's called prime because its only factors are 1 and itself. So, when you have tried all the factoring tricks in your bag, GCF, backward foil, difference of squares, and so on, and the quadratic equation will not factor, then you can either complete the square or use the quadratic formula and skip the factoring to solve an equation. Factoring can sometimes be quicker, which is why it is recommended that you try it first. We have some tips. Standard form for a quadratic expression is the x squared term, followed by the x term, followed by the constant, in other words, ax squared plus bx plus c. So that will be our formula for quadratic equation or for solving quadratic equation. If you're given a quadratic expression that isn't in standard form, rewrite it in standard form by putting the degrees in descending order. This makes factoring easier. So don't, if you forget to factor out this GCF, you may also forget to find a solution. And that could mix you up in more ways than one. Without any solution, you could miss a root and then you could end up with an incorrect graph for your polynomial. To factor the polynomial 6x raised to 4 minus 12x raised to 3 plus 4x squared follow these steps. First, we have to break down every term into prime factors 
this expand the expression to 4, 6, x raised to 4, 3 times 2 times x times x times x times x minus 12x cubed can be break down into 2 times 2 times 3 times x times x times x and then plus 4x squared 2 times 2 times x times x. Since we are already done by breaking down each term, second is we're going to look for factors that appear in every single term to determine the GCF. In this example, you can see only 2 and 2 x's in every term. These are underlined in the following. So therefore, the GCF here is 2x squared. Next step, factor the GCF out from every term in front of parentheses and leave the remnants inside the parentheses. You have now 2 times x times x times the quantity 3 times x times x minus 2 times 3 times x plus 2. Multiply out to simplify each term. This gives you 2x squared times the quantity 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. Distribute to make sure the GCF is correct. If you multiply the 2x squared inside the parentheses, you get uh, 6x raised to 4 minus 12x plus 4x. You can now say that 2x squared is the GCF. Do your quiz number two. Uh, write it and answer it in a clean sheet of paper or band paper. And of course, uh, don't forget to attach your solution. So if you have some questions, don't hesitate to uh, approach me with my Facebook account, Rosalie Fariolan, or just call or text me by my mobile number attached in your modules. Thank you and God bless.